Blessings and greetings in that wonderful name of Jesus Christ coming to you from the Crystal Cathedral. I pray that the Lord has been blessing you and keeping you and has been uh, giving you uh, the desires of your heart. First, I would like to honor the spirit of the Lord uh, that is in this place. The anointing of God is in this house, um, on these grounds. He's covering this county. Also, I'd like to give honor and glory to our bishop and to our first lady, uh, Dr. Maurice Carter, Mother Carter, God bless you, and to the brethren that are here. Also, I'd like to give honor to my lovely wife, Cheryl Bates, and also to uh, my kids at home, God bless you. Uh, I pray that the Lord has been uh, doing a mighty, mighty work um, in these last days, no matter what we see, no matter what we are hearing, no matter what we are going through. Before we get into the word um, on tonight, let us first uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we honor you, we praise you, we glorify you on this evening. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would touch those that are listening. Lord, I ask that you would give them strength, give them uh, the word that they need for tonight a word that will bless, a word that will anoint, a word that will deliver, a word that will sanctify, a word that will touch minds and bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that you would just open up our spirits on tonight that we're able to hear from you. Lord, let there be a voice from heaven in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we bind every enemy, every demonic spirit over the airways that there will be Oh God, a word for your people. We ask, oh God, that you will send strength in these times. Lord, send anointed in these days that we're able to hear from you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Devil, you are a liar in the blood of Jesus is against you. We will seek the face of God and we will operate in the word of God as a body of believers. And we'll forever give your name the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. It is an honor and a privilege to come uh, tonight uh, with a word from the Lord. And uh, I am uh, pleased uh, to be uh, standing uh, here before you. Tonight, we're going to uh, talk uh, tonight about the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about the culture of the kingdom. Um, and also, these are some things that the Lord has really placed um, in my heart, on my heart for the last, uh, probably last 120 days or so, uh, last 90 days, uh, really uh, dealing with and really focusing on what does that mean to the body of believer, um, the kingdom of God, what does it look like as to the body of believer, um, where uh, do we stand even in this time and even um, in 2021, in February, where do we really stand um, concerning the kingdom of God and what it looks like um, as a body, body believers? I believe that this word is closely connected and, and, and will tie into um, what our bishop has been speaking to us about order in the court and what that looks like uh, for us. Uh, and I believe I can. I believe the Lord is bringing us uh, together to speak that word and have that word come together, um, holy. Uh, when he when it talks about the kingdom, talking about uh, the kingdom of God, there's his culture, talking about um, ordering the court, what all of that entails, and uh, how God has set uh, things in order for us um, on earth and what his design for us uh, from heaven to earth and where he has taken us to even in this day. I believe that the Lord is really uh, pushing the body of Christ. He's really trying to get our attention to wake us up, to be able to hear uh, from him, to be able to see um, from him and be able to dive into the word of God and to pull um, out of the word and allow those things that we read, those things that we're hearing um, over the pulpit, those things that we're reading in the Bible, and have those things to be manifest um, right here 
and right now uh, for today. And uh, um, today is the day of salvation. Now is salvation. Now um, God is setting things in order. Uh, from even from the foundation of the world, even when he spoke um, all things into existence, he was setting up his kingdom even then. Um, even when man fell, um, even when he fell in the Garden of Eden, um, even after the fall, he was still setting up a way that we can be in the kingdom of God and inherit the kingdom of God, stand um, in the kingdom of God and stand in the place of God where we can petition the court, where we can petition uh, God's word and have God's word manifested uh, for us today. And I believe and I know um, that God's word is true. God's word is sure. And I know that as a body of believers, the body of Christ, as we come together, I know uh, we will see and we will um, have um, the victory in what God has placed us to have in these last days, in this last time. Um, the scripture that we're going to come out of on today or on tonight will be Matthew's chapter 11. We're going to start at the very first verse, Matthew's chapter 11. And we're going to read all the way down to verse uh, number number 12. And just before um, I get into the word, um, I believe and I know uh, that someone right where you are will be healed. Uh, someone right where you are will be delivered. Someone um, will be filled with the Holy with the Holy Ghost, the power of God, uh, right where you are. Even though you might not be in the sanctuary, but there's something about being together, being on one accord, whether it's Marco Polo, whether it's YouTube, whether it's um, um, uh, the Internet. I believe we can touch and agree, and things shall, and they will happen. Matthew's the 11th chapter, starting at the very first verse, and it reads this. And it came to pass when Jesus had made an end of commanding his 12 disciples. He departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now, when John had heard in, in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said to them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the leper are clean, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And the blessed, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind. But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in the king's houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet, yea. I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this he is of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of a woman, there had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist unto now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. One of the first scriptures I want to come to you out of will be out of Matthew's, the sixth chapter, uh, starting at about the 33rd verse, and how uh, Jesus is really dealing with uh, uh, the local assembly, the body of Christ. And he uh, uh, wants them to begin to understand and wants them to begin to know 
um, starting at the ver starting at verse 33 of Matthew's chapter 6. He wants them to understand that where you are and what you're doing, don't worry about what's going on right now. Because what's going on right now on today, today will take care of itself. And why would he say this? Um, he's allowing um, the saints of God to know. He's allowing the people of God to know. He's allowing us to understand that no matter what we're going through right now, no matter what we see, God already knows. But if he already knows, it's not if he knows, but he do know he's going to take care of today. He's going to also take care of tomorrow. And um, so, so many times I'm worrying or I'm thinking about something um, pertaining to tomorrow and worrying about maybe um, where your next meal may be coming up, coming from, where you're going to get your, where you're getting clothing from. You may be thinking about what's going to happen, but God is saying, guess what? I'm going to take care of today and I'm going to take care of of tomorrow, because if I'm going to worry about tomorrow today, then the troubles or the things that matter right now, I may miss them. I may miss something that God has. This is what he said. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall ye eat or what shall you drink? Therewithal shall we be clothed. Verse 32, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. So now he's trying to get them to see it's not the body of believers that seek after these things, but is is the Gentiles. In some other translations, it speaks to pagan worshipers. They are the ones that are seeking after the things for tomorrow. And then it goes on and it says, For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Then it goes on and says this, a very, very familiar scripture, very familiar text. Um, that we have been teaching and preaching probably in 2020, in 2020. And he says this in verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So if we seek the kingdom of God first, the things that we're seeking after for tomorrow, guess what's going to happen? They're going to come. Because if we're seeking God's kingdom first, we're going to also seek after the things that he wants for us to have now and for the things that he wants to want us to have for our future and the things that he wants us to have for our family and for our and for the next generation for our heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness so not only are we seeking the kingdom first that's number 1 seeking the kingdom first but then we also got to seek his righteousness. And we know that there, there are times that we want to present certain things to him. But those things that we present to him, are those the things that he are calling or the things that he have called for us to present to him first and foremost? So if we're seeking his righteousness, we got to know what the word of God says about his righteousness. But we also have to know what it says about our righteousness. Because the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. And we have to understand that when we are trying to present what we want God to have, it doesn't necessarily mean that's what he wants for us to present to him. And I believe Bishop put it best when he preached on uh, Saturday, on Sunday, when he talked about what have we really given to God? Because if we're really given all of who we are to the Lord, that means we're understanding that it is what he seeks first and foremost. And right where you are, you can say amen, you can clap your hands, because you have to, we must understand it's his righteousness and it's the kingdom of God that must come first. Somebody just say righteousness right where you are. Righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. So now, if we're seeking the kingdom, we're seeking his righteousness, we know that the things that, um, that, that we have need of will come to us. They go, they, they, they'll come automatically. Why? Because the scripture says, our father know that we have need of them. Then it goes on and says, take therefore no thought for morrow, for the morrow shall take no thought for the things of itself, so sufficient, uh, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So I have to be very careful on the things that I'm I'm pushing 
or the agenda or the things that I'm, I'm trying to get done for today to take care for tomorrow. Because the, 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 the main focus is if I'm seeking the kingdom first, that means that I'm putting God first and foremost. And oftentimes or many times we're trying to figure out what does it really mean to seek God's kingdom first. One of the first things that we must do, I believe the Lord is showing us, is prayer. Prayer is the first thing that we must have in our arsenal when it comes to seeking the kingdom of God first. Pray ye therefore, because why? Because one of the things that Jesus told his disciples, and, and he told them in Matthew chapter 7, and he wanted them to understand in Matthew chapter 7, when we begin to seek the kingdom of God, pray ye therefore, yet thou Father which art in heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You understand that you're putting the kingdom first when we understand that we're calling on the Father. When you call on the Father, what you're calling on is actually the very source of life. When you're calling on the very source of life, you're calling on the very thing that gives you the very, uh, uh, the very air that you breathe. It's in him that we live and move and have our being. It's in him that we have all things. Because why? We're seeking the kingdom first. We're seeking the righteousness of God first. And then we begin to understand that he's going to add all of these other things to us. And what are those things? Those things are the things that we're in need of. It's not necessarily the things that we want. It's the very things that we are in need of. So the very first thing that we understand that we must do when we're seeking the kingdom of God is the first thing is prayer. Prayer is the one essential thing that we must have, that we must do, we must, and the Lord has just been dealing with me in, this, in those times, is that when we're seeking God in prayer, and seeking him in that time, put in two hours and 40 minutes, a tenth of our time, my God, in prayer, in meditation, and seeking his face, does great wonders in your spirit, in your mind, in your body, uh, uh, for your daily life, for your daily walk, even before you go to work. Um, if you could just imagine just spending that time in God. Um, I don't know um, if, if you ever miss one day in prayer and you're gone out and you're gone out to work and you're gone out to do some things. It feels like you're missing something. It feels like you haven't done all that you could do to get your day started. Getting your day started in prayer is number one. The very second thing that God requires for us to seek in the kingdom is fasting. Fasting is a number one, another number one essential thing that God has placed in our arsenal when it comes to seeking the kingdom of God. One of the scriptures that come to mind is when the uh, disciples went up to the mountain. And when they went up to the mountain, Jesus was transfigured. But when he was transfigured, um, Jesus wanted them to let them know that guess what? Building these tabernacles in this place is not conducive. Why? Because we must go back down to the foot of the mountain and preach the gospel, spread the gospel. Once you have had that mountain experience, it's time to come down to share the word of God with others, to share the kingdom of God with others, to let others know that there is a God that sit high, and there is a God that lets us know that there is a word and there is victory and there is something for the body of Christ. But the other point that, that Jesus made after he came down out of the mountain was this. When, when it came down to fasting, there was a father that pleaded on the behalf of his son. And as he pleaded on the behalf of his son, one of the things that he, he had to plead about was that uh, there were other men, there were other disciples that could not rebuke the devil. Isn't that what, could you imagine how it feels when you know that the power of God should be there and you know you should be walking with God's anointing and God's uh, fullness and you go to speak to a demonic spirit and it don't move and it don't move out of the way and God 
and Jesus, one of the things that he did, instead of letting them off the hook, one of the first things he did, he rebuked them. He said, oh, perverse and wicked generation, how long, will I, how long shall I be with you? And one of the things that Jesus did, he rebuked the enemy. He rebuked him to his face. And the Bible says that the boy fell to his face as dead. And when he fell to his face as dead, he began to let them know this kind only goeth out by fasting and praying. There are times that we have to seek God in, in fasting. We have to seek God in prayer because, because Jesus understood when he went into the wilderness for 40 days and for 40 nights. He understood that the only way that he could defeat the enemy is that he had to turn his plate down. There are times, my God, that we have to turn our plate down, whether it's one day, whether it's two days, whether it's four or five days. There are times we have to say, guess what? I have to cut the television off. I have to shut things down. I have to put down the sweets. I have to put down the pleasant foods, all the things that make me feel good, and just seek God in fasting. Seek God in the Word. Seek God for all the things that he have. Why? Because I know that there's something greater and I know that there's something uh, better out there. If Jesus had to pray for 40 days and 40 nights, how much more do we have to pray for the things that God wants to do in and through us? I believe it's the power of God that works in and through us. If you could just go to, to Isaiah 58 and one of the things that he began to show us that he told, he tells Isaiah to cry loud, spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet in Zion, show our people their transgressions in the house of Jacob their sins. But he began to show us that we have to repent and turn away from those things that, that are not like him. And one of the things that he began to show us concerning fasting is that guess what? When you begin to fast, healing begins to take place in your body. Why? Because you give your system a rest. You give your body a rest from those things that are, those toxins that are in the air, those toxins that are in those foods, that are in those meats, that are on that canned foods, those preservatives. You give your body a rest and all of those things begin to fall away. Even though it may feel like you're hurting, even though you may feel like, my God, you're about to die. You're about to go to the last place uh, of rest, but I believe it is where God strengthens us and God gives us the victory in prayer and fasting. The Bible says, in, according to Isaiah 58, your morning shall spring forth. You shall have joy. You shall have strength. My God, that's something about fasting and prayer. And I got to tell you, there's something that I saw in my family when I began to turn my plate down for about 14 days with only liquids. And God began to show me that there was something in the body or there was something in my family. I seen my God, my family begin to do something that they have never begun to do before. My youngest son would get up early in the morning at about two o'clock. He'd begin to pray. Christopher would get up 11 years old. Nobody tells him that he have to pray. My God, it's something about fasting and praying. It's something about knowing about the word of God that you know that it has to be something more, that it has to be something greater, but there's something that you have to do to get to it. There's something out of the ordinary that you have to see in the word of God. There's something out of the ordinary in prayer because you know you have to get in that prayer closet there's something about fasting when you begin to turn down that food. My God, even when you're hungry, you got to say, Lord, the word of God is more than enough. The word of God is sufficient for me. I know, my God, you're more than able. But what the thing is, is getting beyond the flesh. That's why Paul said, the thing that dwelleth in my, the thing that is in my flesh, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. And the thing that we don't want to do because we love to watch our television, we love to eat those good things. My God, some of you are thinking about food right now, but I'm thinking about what a joy it is to fast, to turn down the plate, to say, Lord, I'm here. I'm willing to do what you have called me to do. I'm here to do what you have sent me to do for this time in the kingdom of God. The other thing that God has set forth along with fasting, my God, my son, 
some of you, he would just get up and I'd be in my prayer closet and I'd be hearing him and he's just crying out to the Lord. He's crying out for victory. He's crying out and he's telling, my God, he's even put out videos on TikTok. I ain't even tell him. He's even preaching on social media that Jesus Christ is real. He's saying, guess what? You've got to know that God is real and he's coming back soon and he's coming back for the body of Christ. He is putting these things out and nobody has to tell him. That's one thing about being in the body of Christ. He knows that he's already been commissioned to go out and do the works of the Lord. He's already know he's been commissioned to preach the gospel because the word of God that's coming strong out of the body of Christ. The other thing that God has given us the victory in when we understand that the, that the word of God is true. We understand that prayer is good. We understand that fasting is good. The other thing that we have to hold strong on is the word of God. My God. And that's why Jesus says, or that's why the writer says, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman who need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And one of the things that we must understand is that we don't study to strive with the fist of wickedness. We study to show ourselves approved unto God, not unto man, but unto God. Because we're trying to get what God's word out. We want to see what God has to say in these last days. Lord, what are you saying to your people? Lord, what are you saying to me? Lord, what are you saying to my family? What are you trying to convey unto us right now? Lord, if you're telling us to shut it down, we'll shut it down. But I know that prayer, fasting in the word of God Amen. keeps us connected in the body of Christ. Keeps us connected with the things of God. My God, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost because I know that these three things connected together. If we can do these things in concert as a body, as a brother, and as sisters coming together in the body of Christ, I know we can have the victory. I know we can speak to a virus and tell that virus to go back to the pits of hell. Why? Because we understand that it's God's word. If God telling us to go forward, we must go forward. If God telling us to stand still, we must stand still. If God telling us to take a knee, we must take a knee. Why? Because we got to be active in the kingdom of God. The very fourth thing that makes us strong in the body of Christ is forgiveness. I've got to be able to forgive myself for the things that I've done in the flesh, the things that were done in, the, in my past in the flesh. I've got to be able to forgive myself. I, and the other thing, I've got to be able to forgive others. My God, those that have trespassed against me, those that have, my God, that have said things or have done things, my God, that's the other thing that's going to bring you victory in the body of Christ, my God. Because there's something about saying, Lord, I forgive myself. And there's something about saying, Lord, I forgive them even though they have said things outside of the will of God, said things in the flesh. Guess what? I got to go back to what Jesus said. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Why? Because I know God is about to set us up for a miracle. And when I forgive them, that means they're released from the, from the, from the depths of sin. They're released from the other things that they know that they haven't done. And the next thing, the fifth thing that I must understand and I must know that it's, it's very foundational and the very thing that we must not lose in the body of Christ is love. I've got to have love. I've got to have love for my brothers. I've got to have love for my sisters. Amen. I've got to have love for those that don't even love me. Bible tells us, Jesus says, even love your, even love your enemy, my God. Even love those that despitefully use you. Why? Because it brings victory to the kingdom of God. This is what the kingdom does. The world tells us an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. If you hit me, I hit you back, my God. But what God is telling us, we must forgive. We must love our neighbor as Christ loved us, my God. Because there's something when God gives us the freedom to love, my God. It's something when God gives us the freedom to give back to those that don't even know. Even though their conscience may be seared with a hot iron, it don't even matter. Jesus sat down even with the hypocrites, with the sinners. He sat down with those, with even the ones that the Pharisees wouldn't even sit down with. Why? Because they understood that they must hear the kingdom of God. They must hear about the things of God. They must know about the, what God has sent for them to have. And the other thing God is setting us to do in the kingdom of God, my God, concerning 
it. Uh, Matthew chapter 16, when it comes down to where he's taking us to. My God, if you could just get it real quick, Matthew chapter 16, if right where you are, if you can just give God a praise, if you can just, just, just give God a because you had the victory in him. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. 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 Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the victory. Give him the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other thing that he does and the other thing that he gives us concerning the kingdom of God, he begins to allow us to see who he is. He begins to deal with the disciples. He begins to talk to them. And he begins to ask them the one main question who do men say that I am and all the son of man am? And he says, and the disciple says, oh my, we, we, we're not careful to answer. We don't even, uh, they're saying, um, uh, you're the prophet, you're Elijah, you're Jeremiah, you're one of the prophets. And then it goes on and says, who do you say that I am? That's the question that we must understand when it talks about us walking in the kingdom of God. Who do we say that Jesus Christ is? Is he just, uh, is he just a way maker? Is he just uh, a, 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 a lawyer in the courtroom? Is he just these things? My God, I'm going to tell you what, saints of God, he's that and much more. That's why, that's why Peter stood up and said, to the body of Christ, and he stood up to the disciples, thank you, sir, and he says to them, and he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus says to him, flesh and blood and not revealed this unto you, only but by my Father in heaven, but this is what the, this is what Jesus says to him, he doesn't really call him Peter first off and foremost, he calls him Simon Bar Jonah, if you didn't know this from the beginning, that was Peter's real name from the beginning, but Jesus had to Change his name from shaking in the wind, just a leaf in the wind, going everywhere. If you know P Peter's character, he always spoke out of turn. He would say things out of the way. He would say things when it wasn't his time to say it. But he called him something very special. He said, upon this rock, Peter, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why? Because he understand right in the very region where he was standing in Philippi, Caesarea, he he understood that there was a pit there that they call the gates of hell and that gates of hell spoke to death and he wanted them to understand you might understand that there are some calling me a prophet but Peter understand that there's revelation coming from heaven there's a word coming from God there's something more than I'm more than just a prophet you've got to understand that the word of God is standing right here in front of you the Christos the Christ the Christ most is stunning right here before you the anointed one God himself uh, and Peter understood this and when Jesus began to speak on the very word and the very revelation that Peter spoke on he began to understand that this word that was spoken by this man of God he's going to build something great on it and nothing else can hold it back nothing else can take it down nothing else can be able to see it come to pass or come against it, my God. God is about to bring something to your house. It might look like there's an ice storm coming, but I believe that you can fly above that storm. It may look like that all hope is lost, but I believe that God is taking you to another level because there's something that's down on the inside of you that he's trying to pull out of you. And when he pulls it out of you, he might even change your name. He might even change the very essence of your character. Why? Because he's got to get the very name nature of what he's called you to be. He called him Peter. And when he called him Peter, he said, not even death, not even Hades can keep you away from the kingdom of God. Because when you die, to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And he takes it another step further. When it comes down to the kingdom of God, he then begins, begins to give the whole body of Christ. He gives us the keys to the kingdom. He said, here, 
are the kings and whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. How can you bind and loose things from heaven and earth? You've got to know the word of God. You've got to know what God has set you here to do. You've got to know your gift and your calling. God has set you in such a place, in such a time. It seems like that all things are in a disarray, but you have been born for this time. You have been born for the presence of God. God has set us in a place of crises. What does crises really mean? This really means to the body of Christ. It means a time for innovation. It means it's a time for inventions. This is a time that when God begins to use you the most because now you can begin to think of ways to go beyond just the regular plateau. Just to go beyond the norm. Why? Because God is setting us up for a miracle. He is setting the body of Christ up. He is setting the church up so that we can meet him in the air. I'm almost done what God is about to do even in this crisis. There's some of you that have inventions that must come out. There's some of you that being innovative you're saying there got to be a better way to make this product better. And another thing that God is doing even in a pandemic. He's also he's building businesses. He's opening up doors of churches. Why? Because there are floodgates of bodies and souls of believers that must come into the kingdom of God. Someone has to stand up, cry loud and spare not. There's somebody that's got to go to the next level in the next dimension. And it's not just coming by saying a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You've got to give it all up to the, to the Lord. You've got to give it all up to the kingdom of God. God is setting us up for a miracle. The next thing that we must understand is God is setting us up in the body of Christ. He's speaking to John the Baptist disciples. John the Baptist has gotten weary when he's coming to the things of God. There's something about being in jail, being behind bars, going through a thing, going through an issue. Ah, mm. Going through something that makes you want to wonder what God is taking you through. Somebody give God a praise. Give God a praise. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Right where you are, give God a praise. Right where you are, give God a, a magnificent praise because this is what's happening in the body of Christ. God has used John the Baptist mightily to baptize Jesus in the Jordan River. And he begins to speak about the things of Jesus Christ. He begins to see what God is doing to him. God is doing such great things for Jesus. But it's something about being used in your gift. And now you're in a place, my God, where things seem dim. You're in a place where things seem bad. So now you begin to question who Jesus really is. It's is this the one who said that should be coming or should I be looking for another? Jesus began to talk to his disciples. <clears throat> he begins to let them know. He begins to let them see. My God. Jesus. Hallelujah. He begins to let them know. He begins to let them see that one of the things that you must know, that even know that John the Baptist is locked up and he's in jail, one of the things you must say, he is a great man of God. Even though he's where he is, he's still a mighty man and he's still my servant and I still got my hand on him. And because I still got my hand on him, no matter what he sees, no matter where he is, I'm still going to bless him. All you have to do is run and tell him, you disciples, let him know, my God. Let him know, let him understand that eyes are being opened, the lame is walking, that my God, that lepers are being healed, that the work of the Lord is coming to pass. What does that mean? That means that the kingdom of God is being pronounced. One of the things that when he rebuked the man that was in the graveyard, he said, you better praise God because the kingdom of God is here. And because of these things, God is making a way for you right now. God is making a way for your family right now. God is making a way no matter where you are right now. 
right now, one of the things that God is setting us forth in the kingdom of God, the other thing that we must see and the other thing that we must know, and I'm about to bring this to a close, is this, is that when John the Baptist began to understand that no matter where I am, no matter where I'm at, and is Jesus going to speak these kind words, guess what? He's also going to speak as a warrior. He begins to let them know that the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken by force. That doesn't mean that we have to be uncouth. It doesn't mean that we have to do things out of the way just because someone is nasty to us that we have to be nasty to them. That's not what that means. That means that we're going to do the very opposite. We're going to do the very thing that God has called us to do to be successful in the kingdom of God. We're going to move in the body of Christ the way he's called us to do. If things are going to be violent, I'm going to be violent in prayer. I'm going to be violent in fasting. I'm going to be violent in the word of God. When it comes down to somebody that want to hear about the things of God, my God, I'm going to be ready to answer that man. Why? Because I know that God is real. I know that God is able. I know that he's about to set us to a to a special place. What you gonna take? I'm gonna take back my finances. I'm gonna take back my houses. I'm gonna take back my children. I'm gonna take back all of those things that the devil thought he had. Somebody give God some praise. God is setting us up for a miracle. It don't look like it, but he's setting us up to be blessed. Operate in the kingdom of God. Let God's word move in and through you. Hallelujah. There's something special about body of believers. Is this. Even when you step on the scene, my God. Amen. Because Jesus lived in you, through you. When you step on the scene. You can make a chaotic situation right. Amen. Because why? Because the kingdom lives in you. Be blessed, saints of God. Go with the Lord. Go with the word. Go in prayer. Submit to God. Submit to godly leadership. Submit to what God has for you in Jesus' name.